another episode of Africans in Diaspora. Thank you so much for being here. Before we start, I just want to ask you guys, please, please, please go subscribe on my YouTube channel. Just click on the link below and when you go to YouTube, click on the red button, the subscribe button so I can keep making videos like this for you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Our guest today is a wonderful gentleman who lives all the way in Asia. So don't go away. You're welcome to Africans in Diaspora. Our guest today lives 12 hours away from me, all the way in Hong Kong, and he managed to make it work. Wow. Um, welcome to the show, Mr. Onyewichi Johnson, a.k.a. Impeccable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so delighted to be on your show. I'm so excited. I have so many questions, but let me start with why did you leave Africa and why Hong Kong? I left Africa because um, Africa is a big continent and there are so many people in Africa and uh, all of us are not going to stay in Africa. Yeah. So, so many of us, uh, after our schooling, we decided to make our way out of the country, uh, possibly for business or for a better life. Uh, for me, I, what brought me here in the first place was business. Uh, that started in 2009 stroke 2010. What kind of business was that? Uh, the business was a mobile phone. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Mobile phone. We come to Hong Kong, we'll buy the mobile phone, we'll take it to Africa. Uh, there are so many buyers in Africa, especially in Nigeria. Yeah, Nigeria, Nigeria is one of the biggest markets in Africa. Yeah. So that's why we are into that business that period. But because the business is not going well, sometimes you keep flying on the air, in and out, and oh. you can't make much of the money that you're flying in. Yeah. And like, I always come to Hong Kong two times in a month. Wow. Wow. And it's, it's quite a distance, right? How, how long did you have to fly? Uh, I have to tell you, the distance is very far. It's 18 hours journey. 18 hours? I tell you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And you had to do that two times every month. Yeah, exactly. Right. That was too much. Yeah, so you decided enough of the flying. I, I, I'm just going to stay here and just just chill. Yes, I made the decision to stay back in Hong Kong at the, the end of 2011. I think it's better for me uh, when I yeah, get yeah. To next year. Yeah. I can ship it to Africa. People will take care of it and sell it, supply the goods, and send you money back. I think it's the easiest way and the less yes. expensive. Yeah, that is true. That, that is, is how I ended up staying here. And also I have a dream that I can build my business here in Hong Kong. Yes, yes, that is nice. Wow. So how is it going so far? How is business going? Um, it was going well initially. Is it also yes. the government of uh, Mohammed Buhari? took over so all the business platform were destroyed so oh, that is terrible that is terrible the government is supposed to encourage small businesses it helps the economy yeah but they are not doing that you know they yeah. don't have vision for people you know that's why we we call the rulers and dictators. yeah about yeah. The people. they just care about themselves yeah, yeah, that is horrible. Wow. Apart from the business, how is life in Hong Kong? Oh, uh, life, you know, uh, life must go on. And when yes. it's so bad, and it's during that time we are doing business, we don't work. Some of us don't yeah. like to work because business gives you the money you need to oh, make. business is booming, yeah, yeah. So right oh. now we are working class, we are working in Hong Kong. Oh. Hopefully, another administration will come in that will appreciate small businesses and maybe you could get back to your business. 
Oh, we, you know, we are, we are very optimistic people. We always believe that uh, things will turn around. And, yeah. Uh, the only permanent thing in life is change. Exactly. Uh, um, yeah, we are hopeful. That is good. That is good. It's good to be hopeful. <laughs> what is the cost of living like? Hong Kong. Hong Kong is one of the most expensive cities in the world. It's, um, um, if not one, maybe it's rank five or six. Yeah. After Switzerland, uh, Tokyo, and rest of the the issue of housing in Hong Kong is a big problem. But uh, the, 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 the people live in a very small room that are not comfortable, the one they can afford, especially uh, the foreigners. The, Depending on the area, around uh, six thousand or seven thousand, the cheapest, which is a very small room, yeah, and that six thousand or seven thousand is equivalent to one thousand USD. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that is. And that is per month. Per month. Wow. So if you are not, if you don't have a good job. Yeah. You are in trouble. <laughs> I can imagine. Wow. Uh, what about things like food and um, utilities? Like water. Water is cheap. Very cheap. Okay. But that of okay. electricity is also supposed to be cheap. Uh, there is a amount uh, that government made it to be. So, so points that you should, somebody must pay every month. But like foreigners, if you are not informed, if you don't check your meter and know how it is moving, the, yeah. the agent, the agent can just tell you any price. There's some agents do like that, not all of them. Like, there are a lot of Africans in Hong Kong. Yeah, a quite number of them. Quite number of them. And people are coming every day. Really? Wow. <laughs> Is a two-way thing. Africans only ones who migrate. Yes. What would you say you like the most about life in Hong Kong? Hong Kong is uh, a home for me. Yeah, it's a home for me and for so many other people who understand uh, the peaceful nature of Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a very small city, uh, okay. but it's uh, full of uh, fun and uh, peaceful environment, you know, oh, no molesting, no intimidation, no fighting, you know, oh, except recently that uh, they are into protest now, that kind of bill, they call it uh, an extradition bill, and that extradition bill means that if you commit crime in Hong Kong, they are going to take you to China for punishment. Oh. And uh, Hong Kong people said, no, that's not going to happen. Oh. They keep on protesting until the demand is being... Oh. Uh, what would you say you don't like? What I don't like in Hong Kong is uh, the housing. Their house is very small, especially for the foreigners. Because, uh, you know, the foreigners is the one that uh, mostly you get the low paid job and low paid job you can't pay for a house that is well okay so yeah. all those, all those uh, houses that are not good is for you so, <laughs> so that is the one thing i don't like it's unlike china like china they have their room is very big the apartment is very big everything okay. in the garden where you live is very big it's, and it's part of the reason why these guys are still protesting it's also part of the reason they believe that government should allocate more lands and more yeah. lands so that them the future tomorrow they can have save money to buy houses yeah. have their own house and be comfortable and be happy you know it's, it's one of the things that is very troublesome in Hong Kong 
and also the how they employ people in their working sector, sector system. You know, once you are a foreigner, it's going to be very difficult for you to get a good job that will pay you well, unless you know how to speak Cantonese very well, fluently, and also write Chinese. Oh boy! <laughs> so they speak Cantonese and uh, they speak English as well and Mandarin. You know, they speak English because the say, British, British colonized them. They were British stayed in Hong Kong for 99 years to 100 years before they handed over to China in 1997. Many of them can speak English. What advice would you give to an African who is uh, coming to Hong Kong? But this advice is, uh, I'm not giving it out because I, I'm a better person to anybody. Yeah, to of course. I'm also giving this advice to myself, to all of us. Uh, uh, Hong Kong is not our, our motherland. When we come here, we have to follow the footsteps of people who have been here before we came. We need to find out what are the things that will make you to survive in Hong Kong. You need to dig it out, find out. Or look at those people who were here before you came. Find out how did they make it happen. You know, make sure you follow the right direction. Ask questions. If what they did to become okay and comfortable in Hong Kong and become resident, if what they did is, is in the right proportion, then what are you waiting for? Just make your way towards that step. Provided it's not something that is dangerous or illegal. Yeah. That yeah. Can you, in jail. you know? Yeah. The other one is stay away from drugs. Stay away from drug business. Stay away from any business that will endanger your life or that will possibly land you in jail. You know, life is a gradual process. Yes. Step by step, you get to where you're going. Wow. Uh, thank you so much for your advice. Um, so what do you have to say to our leaders, you know? considering all that is happening in Africa. You, you call these people leaders? <laughs> oh my God, you are, you are a very good person. <laughs> but for me, <laughs> to me, uh, I don't call them leaders. I'm sorry to sound like that. I don't call them leaders uh, with two reasons. Uh, what I call them is rulers, because there is difference between leader and ruler. You know, they are dictators. You know, when somebody is a leader, there are some certain qualities expected of a leader and that of a ruler. You know, a ruler is always a, a dictator, a tyrant. They do yeah. things by force. They yeah. impose their power on the people, impose their position on the people. They force people to do what people don't like. If you don't, if you don't accept their opinion, they will kill you, they will lock you up, they will destroy your business, destroy your life. So those people you are calling leaders, whom I don't see as leaders, they don't have that kind of vision, they don't have that kind of mission, that, uh, that uh, intellectual ability to lead their people to the next level. They don't have it. All they do is accumulation of wealth. They want to eat everything and lose their soul. Very greedy. They're just, what they do in Africa is they fight over ethnic and religious sentiment. None of them is, re is ready to, to lead the people to the next level. So why do, I, why do I need to call this kind of people leader? They don't know what is leadership. They have never attended a leadership class. So they don't know the quality of leaders. If they know it, Africa will not be the way it is today. That have failed in all ramifications, in all indications yeah. of life. So far as leadership is concerned, they got it zero, zero point zero. <laughs> Seriously. 
matter what our leaders are doing, we the citizens, we the people, we are also part of, in fact, we are the government. You know, everything begins and ends with us. You know, all power belongs to us. But it's just that these guys have using God to take this power away from the people. Anything you do, they will shoot you, they will kill you. Yeah. I want to, yeah. I want to advise, I want to tell people to be encouraged and never give up. You know, just keep pushing it wherever you are. Keep pushing it, keep voicing out. You know, yeah. keep your voice there, let the world hear you. On a very good day, things will change. You know, yeah. this planet have enough resources that can make everybody comfortable. Thank you so, so much. Um, do you want to make a shout out to anyone before we go? Uh, I want to say shout, shout out to my friends and my families and uh, well wishers and uh, mostly people which uh, what I'm saying now will resonate with people that it will connect with, you know, uh, most shout out to them, they belong to the same family of ours, you know, togetherness, we stand togetherness, we can push things forward, and the riders will always fall and fall forever. So my shout out to, to the, your people over there in New York. <laughs> Maybe you know. Despite the time difference, you made it work, and I appreciate that. I appreciate everything. Thank you so much. Yeah, and the um, is mine. Stay, strong. stay strong. Keep working hard, and I, I hope that things will turn around for you. you All know. right. Uh, thank you too for your good work. You know, keep on inspiring us. Keep on doing the good work. Keep it up. Okay. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and I will see you in the next video.